Okay, so we have seen that orbital angular momentum is the generator of the space rotations. Now let's work out the commutation relations among the different components of the angular momentum operator. You may say, why are we interested in that? Well, if nothing, we are interested in that for the sake of measurement theory, right? Whether we can measure all the different components of the angular momentum simultaneously. As in the case of X, we have X1, X2, and X3. According to the previously discussed issues, we can measure these three coordinates simultaneously. And we can measure the three components of the momentum operator also simultaneously, P1, P2, P3, because they commute. Therefore, it occurs one whether we can do the same for the different components of the angular momentum, whether we can measure them simultaneously or not, apart from any other thing. Well, you, you may say, is this a well-posed question? Yes, of course. Momentum is the generator of the translations as still different components commute among each other. So this, the translation group is an abelian group because the generators of the different three generators commute among each other. Still construct, uh, you create a symmetry. And this also generates a symmetry and whether it commutes or not needs to be checked. I continue with the orbital angular momentum and we'll see the consequences after for the general abstract case. Now, it's still orbital angular momentum. Commutators of orbital angular momentum. Okay. Now, I will use the simple notation. Now, as we are not going to go from operators to eigenvalues, instead of writing the capital letters, cap writing capital letters is not easy, it's, a, it, it's costly. It, it, so I, I use L, I, epsilon, I, J, K, X, J, P, K. Operators. Use the little letter, small letters, but I, I say these are operators now, instead of complicating the notation any further. And we have the basic commutation relations, right? Xi, Xj is zero. Pi, Pj is zero. Xi with Pj is Ih bar delta Ij. Let's see whether we can use these as input to work out the commutators Li with Lj. I have to warn you that this is really a rather a old version, as everything is based on sort of orbital angular momentum. Eventually, in the context of group theory, orbital angular momentum has lost its esteem a little bit, and it's became part of the more general class of generators of rotations in general sense. But orbital angular momentum is known so well from the classical world because in the classical world there is no spin, so if there is angular momentum, it's the orbital angular momentum anyway. So as we have the basic commutation relations or the classically basic Poisson brackets, we can work out the quantum commutators or the Poisson brackets among the different components of the angular momentum, whether classical or quantum, doesn't matter, okay. This is one approach. A more modern approach is as we have seen that angular momentum is the generator of the rotations, we can uh, use that definition. Uh, I will comment upon it before the end of today. And use that definition also to work out these commutation relations alternatively. That is more perhaps important because this is very specific to orbital angular momentum and this cannot be applied to spin, for instance because it has no classical counterpart, but that other method can be apl applied to the spin case, so it is more uh, modern, if, if to say the least, 
But let's go through this. You, you probably, most of you are familiar with this. Instead of spending too much time, we can work it out easily. So what do I have? Li Lj, epsilon i Lm, xlpm, epsilon j kn, xkpn. Some of were repeated indices are understood. That is how you compute the commutators easily, right? Move these constants out and then try to decompose these quickly and x and x, p and p commute. Therefore, there are not too many terms coming from there. Epsilon i l m, epsilon j k n, and there is x l p m x k p n, one case, and then this to the left and that to the right, x k p m x l p n. These are the only two terms which needs to be computed from here. Because xn, xp, and p is zero. There are two more terms, but they vanish. And these are the cross terms only. What is this? ih bar minus delta m k, ih bar with the plus sign, delta ln. So you have ih bar overall, and this term enables you to identify L with N, so it is epsilon ILM, epsilon J K L, because L with N, this I replace with X K P M, and here similarly you identify M with K, so I L K epsilon j k n p l sorry x l p n notice that epsilons can be contracted because there are repeated epsilons indices in here there are the l's and there are the k's so what do i have in here epsilon well, let me not use full notation. ILK and NJK. I have put them in the same position not to make any sign mistakes. And similarly, let me move this as MIL and JKL. So these two are to be crossly correlated. What do we get from here? Delta M, delta J, delta I, delta K, and minus the cross. Delta M, J, delta I, K, minus delta M, K, delta I, J. Sim uh, similarly here, right? If that is the case, what do we get? Well, let me use the color and put it on the same level. MJIK. MJIK is XI. I will write on the top. MJIK making it XIPJ from the first term. And from the seven, second term, IJ minus, minus delta IJ MK. So this first group becomes this, x i p j delta i j x dot p. And let's look at here similarly, i n, n is i, l is, uh, l is, l is i, n is j. So the first term is again x i p j,
minus I uh, L is I. I J, yes. Delta I J. M is I, J I, right? J K, J I, sorry. Mm -hmm. Correct this one, please, because I was getting zero. The first one is X J P I minus X I P J I H bar. The second cross terms cancel because they are the same. And what do we get then? I think I can erase here. <sighs> Li Lj is Ih for our overall. XIPJ. In the R order. L1, L2, X1, 1, 2, 3. Cyclic. L1, L2 is IH4, X1, P2. X3, X2, P1, which is L3. Okay. Instead of doing again construction, etc., I have followed the cyclic or the rule 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1. L3, 1, 2, 2, 1, therefore it is LK, epsilon I, J, K, L, K. So we have worked out this commutator. That's the commutation relation. This commutation relation is very important because eventually it will, uh, first of all, it tells us that you cannot measure the, the different components of the L simultaneously. LX and LY cannot be measured simultaneously, LY and LZ, whatever. If we apply this to the uncertainty, if we use the uncertainty relationship in this context, for instance, what do we get? Delta Li, let me use this notation. Instead of writing the expectation value squared and the square root, I said delta Li is the uncertainty in the Li. Delta Lj is the uncertainty in the Lj is equal to h bar over 2 epsilon ij k. Well, let me put this in because it's going to be plus all the time. Epsilon i, j, k, l, k. That's the relationship. So if it is Lx and Ly, for instance, larger or equal to h bar over 2 Lz. Beautiful. It has uh, nice implications. Let's not elaborate on them any further. That is the uh, how it uh, how it implies what it implies for the uncertainty. For instance, if L is different than zero, any one of them, obviously, you cannot measure them simultaneously. But there is a very specific case. If there exists a state. which is a common eigenfunction of, if there exists if a state, which is a common eigenfunction of the Lx and Ly, 
And it must be an eigenfunction of the LZ, and it's an eigenfunction of the all three of them with the eigenvalue zero. So eigenvalue zero is a very specific case. There, there exists a state which is common eigen state of all three, then it is eigenvalues are zero. If I denote again the capital letter, the operator, the little letter are the eigenvalues. These. You may say, is it strange? It is strange, but so important. It's a ground state of the hydrogen for the Coulomb problem, right? For the Coulomb problem, there is a, a, a ground state, the minimum energy state, which has LX, LY, LZ all zero. That's the spherically symmetric state. And the ground state is, has other far-reaching implications in the other fields, like quantum field theory, but I'm not going to get into that. So pay attention to it. Except this very specific case, uh, you, can, you cannot have common eigenstates for any two, let alone the three, for non-zero eigenvalues. But for the case, it's a very specific case that all the three are zero, you can have a common eigenfunction. Good. Now, one immediate consequence of this operator, this co uh, operator commutation relations is that the L squared commutes with any component That's, again, a very simple algebraic relationship using symmetry and anti-symmetry. So let's work it out, demonstrate this fact. With any component, but not all the three components. One of the components, Lx, or Ly, or Lz. Usually what is chosen is Lz, right? You choose L squared and Lz together to form a complete set. If there's a spherically symmetric Hamiltonian, you include that also. That's the, how you solve the Coulomb problem, remember? But let's do it for any i, any i. So L squared is what? L squared is sum over j is understood, Lj and Lj, right? Then you decompose this, write it Lj, Li, and L, sorry, Lj and Li is the first term. Second term is Lj, Li, move this factor to the right. So this one is equal to this one. And let's use the commutation relations as a ih for epsilon j i k. So ih for epsilon j i k, Lj, Lk plus Lk, Lj. That's it, right? Notice that this is anti-symmetric in JK, and these are symmetric in K, right? This entire thing is symmetric in JK. Symmetric in JK pair. If you let J goes to K and K goes to J, this goes to the second term, second term goes to the first term. This is symmetric in JK exchange, but that's anti-symmetric in JK exchange anti-symmetric, thus zero. Con contraction of symmetric anti-symmetric gives you zero. That's nice. It's going to have, as I said, far-reaching implications. That's a, it's a very good one. And next week, when we undertake the issue of solving the common eigenvalue problem of these two operators, which we choose this, out of this, any i, we choose the LZ. Because if you use the Cartesian coordinates and define the third axis as the, as the axis from which you measure the polar angle, therefore it is the LZ, third component of angular momentum, which gives you the rotation in the plane. So for aesthetic reasons, we choose LZ. So we, we are going to choose this set. L squared and LZ, 
and we are going to address the issue of solving common eigenvalue problem for this. It's a beautiful subject in its own right and eventually common eigenfunctions will be constructed quite fast. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because they are going to be spherical harmonics, YLM family. As L squared and LZ, any component of L, are Hermitian, they have a common set of eigenfunctions which are orthonormal and complete. Being Hermit, that's the general theorem of quantum mechanics, right? That's important. And so that they can be used as a basis. If you are doing physics on the surface of a sphere, which is the two sphere, then you can use this basis as the complete orthonormal basis set, YLM. Okay. The next is, as I promised in the previous hour, let me briefly comment on one thing. Here we worked out the commutators nicely because this has a classical counterpart and we have the basic Poisson brackets and quantum commutators for the XP pairs. So we use those as input and we have been able to work out the LI-LJ commutation relations. Eventually, of course, that they, were, they will be the basis of our eventually use of P squared, the kinetic term in terms of the L squared and radial momentum squared. I will do that also very quickly because probably almost all of you have done it in the 431 previously, but it, it needs to be done quickly. Okay, I'll do it. But here there is something interesting which I have to mention and that's also to establish, not to lose contact with Mr. Sakurai, huh? as I have to every now and then check against him. Can we construct the basic commutation relations of, for example, this one or any generic one? If Li or Ji or Si are generators, if this is the starting point, of rotations in, the, in specific spaces, rotations, whichever space you like, orbital space, spin space, or the total space. As far as that is concerned, that, that detail is not important. If you are going to treat these, any one of them, as generators of the rotations, if the rotations always you refer to space, three coordinates, you make a rotation and you go to the quantum space, whichever, spin one-half space or the orbital space or the total space. Then if you are going to implement those space rotations in those spaces, then you have to find some contact. What do I mean? They have to be vector operators because in these three-dimensional space you are the vectors and rotations are defined in terms of these three vectors so they must be both operators, as they live in the Hilbert spaces or quantum spaces, and they carry the, this space index, so they must be vectors and operators. That is, Li should transform like Xi under rotations. Can I say that? Well, being vector, of course. Being operator, I need to consider expectation value, right? Well, the same applies to Si. It should transform like Xi. In this spin one, two-dimensional spin space, or Ji should transform like a vector in the tensor product space of the orbital Hilbert space times the two-dimensional spin space. But this is a generic statement. These should transform like xi. What do I mean? Let me express them in mathematical notation. For instance, let me take the generic one, this one. ji rotated should be rij ji. Similar, just very similar to this one, remember? Or i, j, x, j. We said that's the rotation of the vectors in the ordinary three space. And their expectation values should transform like those. 
What is this now? This is psi rotated, ji psi rotated. That's the rotated expectation value. Should be the same as rij psi ji. Yes, jj, sorry, psi. That is what it reduces to, no? By the way, in the book there is a discussion. As he has worked out the spin commutation relations based on Stenger like experiment and worked out the matrix representation, etc., in two dimensional space, he verifies this relationship. It's nice, you are asked to verify it. But here I can use an orthogonal, an opposite, a reverse direction. I say if they are the generator of the rotations, I can use those transformation laws instead of verifying and based on the previous information, I can use these, these rotation laws to, to construct the commutation relations. That's the derivation of the commutation relations. They're just writing a very beautiful statement. So how do I proceed then? Let me go to the corner so that you, you can all see it comfortably. If I now say the unitary operators, he uses a curly D. I will let me use a unitary operator. Your rotations should be norm preserving. If you lose norm, that's bad. So if these rotations are implemented by unitary operators, so psi rotation is U rotation psi. I denote that uh, operator in the quantum space implementing R, that is the U, R, U related to R, then psi rotated is psi U dagger of R, then the left hand side of that expression is, left hand side is psi U dagger of R, Ji U of R psi. What is the right hand side? right hand side is psi r i j j j psi. If the state in question is an arbitrary one, then what do you get? U dagger r j i U of R, R, I, J, J, J. Isn't that nice? You may say, so what? That's sort of a defining relationship. Well, not really. That does the job for us. We said, <laughs> if J is the generator of the rotation, and J itself is a vector operator. We are using it as a generator and treating it as a vector operator, writing, writing the property for a vector operator to transform. Therefore, I can write U as e to the i over h bar theta n dot J and apply this to this rule. And if in the infinitesimal case, inf that is 1 plus i over h bar delta theta n dot j. Let me check my sign convention so that I don't get into trouble eventually. Yes, I think I'm using the, the same sign convention I worked out. Okay. What was Rij? Rij is the usual rotation matrix that I worked out, remember? What was it? Rij inf. Delta Ij plus delta theta 
epsilon i k j and k, right? We were putting that in the middle. The first and second index of the rij matrix is the first and third of the epsilon. So if I substitute those in this equation, what do I get? I get in the left hand side i minus i over h bar delta theta. We take, of course, these to be Hermitian in order to be physically meaningful. L is Hermitian by default, and all these are of the same family, same nature. So we take S is Hermitian spin too. And if this is a generic generator, we take it to be Hermitian so that it is exponentiated with an I in the front makes U unitary. I times the Hermitian matrix in the exponent makes the unitary. Okay, so this is the uh, left, this the first factor, Ji times I plus I over H bar <laughs> delta theta and dot J, that's the left hand side. And what about the right hand side? The right hand side is delta IJ plus delta theta epsilon i k j and k times j j. That's the right hand side. Notice that i j and i is j i, delta i j times delta j j is j i, they cancel. There are the cross terms in the left hand side, which is linear in delta theta. There are delta square terms we drop. We are doing infinitesimal calculus. So left hand side is what? <coughs> left hand side is i over h bar delta theta j i n dot j commutator, right? Notice that this with that and this with that with a minus sign, so it's the commutator. And right hand side is Delta theta, epsilon i k j, and k j j. Nice. Already, most of you felt that commutator is coming out. We are driving the commutator, isn't that beautiful? Based on a very simple relationship, identifying them as the generator of the rotations does the job for us. Delta theta is the arbitrary infinitesimal rotation parameter. I call it off and write this nkjk, sum over k is understood. Move the nk out of the bracket. In the left hand side I have i over h bar and nk, this constant unit vector defining the rotation axis times j i j k and here I have epsilon i k j and k j j. NK are t unit vectors, right? Linearly independent being unit vector. So I call, cancel them off. Move this factor to the right. JI, JK, if it goes to the right with a minus sign, epsilon, I, KJ, JJ. Where does the sign mistake comes in? This is the right rotation, the other is the left rotation. Would there be a mismatch in here? If R is what corresponds to the J, that is with the plus sign, perhaps I should have started with the plus in the left. You see the convention. Uh, we have Work this out saying that it is a right rotation. 
and we, ta we have taken u as this plus. You know, it should have been taken as minus, right? Let, let's go back and check. Remember, on the x position, I get back to the basis, I have taken the, the u unitary operator as the e to the minus i over h bar. And then r was this. Sorry, this convention. So you see, you have to be careful in the convention. I will take the u to have a right rotation. This must be taken as minus, minus. So that this is the rotation I get in the right hand side, minus. So I'm glad that we have obtained that uh, minus uh, the wrong sign because it, it's important that rotation has a direction, right? You, you cannot have the explicit realization and the generator with the opposite conventions. So this is, that's correct. This comes out with a minus sign, comes out with a minus sign, and you get the correct sign. So this warning is important. Please pay attention to this one. This one. That and that sign in here are correlated, showing the sign. Isn't that nice? We have obtained the commutation relations by requiring that J's, which are the generators, are vector operators. So they should transform like any vector. Transforming like any vector gives you the commutation relations. So I think that's a very uh, good point uh, to keep contact with the book. I'm not going to stick too much from this point on, and I will uh, turn my, uh, my attention next to solving the common eigenvalue problem of the j squared and jz first, and eventually I will address another important problem, which is the addition of angular momenta. But uh, before that, as I have about 10 minutes, let me start with uh, this common eigenvalue problem of j squared and jz, because we have to rush, really. We have only two more weeks left. We will continue. This discussion will not be finished today. It's sort of a warm-up and a preparation for the actual discussion. So the subject is the j squared and jz eigenvalue problem. As they commute, therefore we can really talk about the eigenvalue problem. But before that, we are going to address, well, let me de define it. Let me proceed quickly. I, call, I define the common eigenstates, common eigen, eigenstates, J and M. Well, when there is need to really clarify further, when there's L and S together, I will put NJ in here, but here JM is enough. And the definition is J squared, JM, if I can use the book's notation, because I have to uh, every now and then uh, consult with it. Uh, okay. He calls it A. Funny. <laughs> I don't know why he calls it. I will call it the H bar squared, JM. Notice that I would like to come up with dimensionless numbers. What is the uh, dimension of it? X, and X cross P squared, for the orbital angular momentum at least. X and P. P is H bar times D by DX. So X and D by DX kill the dimensions, cancel each other. There's an H bar in the J and H bar squared in the J squared. So it is a nice definition to call it H bar squared. Okay, 
J Z J M is M H bar. That's the dimensional this number. J and M. Eigenstates are common. Eigenvalues naturally are different, right? That's the definition of a common eigenstate problem. Now we are going to need some operators, ladder operators. In the remaining minutes, I, let me work them out. Define j plus minus is j1 plus minus ij2 we define. Notice that these are not Hermitian. And non-Hermitian ones play the role of ladders, remember? In the simple harmonic oscillator, we have also seen that A and A dagger were not Hermitian themselves. A's conjugate was A dagger and vice versa. They play the role of ladders in the energy spectrum. They increase the energy by one unit of H bar omega or down. Now here, they're going to also play the role of ladder. By making use of these, let's rewrite the algebra. The original algebra is Ji, Jj, Ih bar, Epsilon, Ij, K, Jk. Now, it, it involves 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3 in Cartesian labels. Now let's work out from here the following. What about j plus and j minus? If you want, you can also look at the minus plus, which is the opposite. Doesn't matter. And you can also look at jz, j plus and minus. That's together, all together it's sufficient, right? There are three of them, non-trivial ones. Instead of one, two, three, you have three and plus and minus. What is the plus minus commutator? Let's work it out. J1 ij2, j1 ij2, j1 with j1 is 0, j2 with j2 is 0, j1 with j2 is ij3, there is an i and i, which is minus and minus, so there is a j3 coming from here. And the second one is 2, 1, 2, 1 is minus i3, there is another minus plus twice j3. So j plus j minus is twice j3. Minus plus is minus twice j3, obviously, right? This is j plus and this is j minus. 2j3. How about this one? Let's work it out. j3 with j plus is j3 j1 plus my j2 is what? j3 with 1, 2, 3. j3 with 1 is ij2. j3 with j2 is minus ij2 minus i plus i, j1. Right? j3 with j2 is minus ij1 and i and my makes it this. So then what is this? This is j plus. So j3 with j plus is j plus. What about j3 with j minus? Let me use the so that you can distinguish. If this is fine, that becomes a minus, so it picks an overall minus sign. So that's the algebra. Okay. So I will use this algebra, obviously this ladder property I will need, uh, but yes. Where? Here? No, the last. Here? Well, the only difference, the let's, last, let's check the first one. The last, the last. The one? The last one. Uh, well, that's the only. Uh, Is it plus minus, t minus or uh, plus t minus? Well, if it is minus, you take the minus and you, well, obviously that's clear. Okay, so uh, what do we do now? What we have to do is, for instance, we can try working out the j squared in terms of j plus and minus, but we are going to really use this expression. Oh, by the way, another thing is, which is important, as j squared commutes with any Cartesian component, that also commutes with the j3, j plus, and j minus, 
that's also clear, right? So we are going to use that property too. I think we are in a good position. We have the sufficient preparation for addressing to solve this problem and determine the eigenvalues and their ranges and etc. And finally these. So our next job next week, part of next job will be solving this problem for the general case. Remember, this is more generic now. As J is the generator of rotations in some abstract Hilbert space, and we have shown how to work out the commutation relations, and the commutation relations are the key to everything, all this discussion. If you know the common, uh, commutation relations, you can solve this common eigenvalue problem, and that's what we will we'll do next week. So that's it for today. <laughs>